I have something of a love-hate relationship with NBC's Heroes. Like many people, I enjoyed the first season. It had a strong villain, intriguing premise, and legendary showrunner Brian Fuller keeping everything grounded. But then came the writer's strike, the cast changes, and plot holes you can drive a truck through. I begrudgingly watched every episode, determined to see it to the end no matter what. Five years after pulling the plug, NBC decided to resurrect the show under a new name, Heroes Reborn. This continuation saw a new cast team up with some of your favorites from the original run. At least, I assume that's what it's about. The truth is, I chose not to get on the ride this time around. I was fooled into hate watching three completely unnecessary seasons of Heroes and have no intentions of repeating my mistakes. I may have vowed to steer clear of the recent television reboot, but that wasn't going to keep me from playing Gemini Heroes Reborn. As somebody who spent far too many episodes waiting for cool stuff to happen, I was ready to play a game full of superhuman characters doing what they do best, blowing crap up. You control Cassandra, a seemingly clueless teenager who is off exploring an old abandoned facility with her buddy Alex. But instead of finding cool treasures in the off-limit ruins, the pair stumbles across a group of soldiers who take Alex hostage. It doesn't take long for Cassandra to spring into action and attempt to free her friend. Little does she know that the kidnapping will be the least unusual thing to happen to her on this day. It wouldn't be a hero's experience without an everyday normal person suddenly getting superhuman powers. In Cassandra's case, she can use her gift to jump through time. But don't get too excited about going back to kill baby Hitler, because she's only able to shift between two different dates, July 13th, 2008 and June 16th, 2014. Beyond being intrinsically connected to the story, Cassandra discovers that these two time periods will give her the freedom to explore areas that would normally be out of reach. It also allows a tiny teenage girl to take on a small army's worth of soldiers. She can jump between times at the press of a button and even preview what's on the other side of the magical portal. Best of all, she can take objects between years to help her have the upper hand in every fight. If this were a TV show, they would spend the whole season developing Cassandra's powers and showing her confidence build with every encounter. But there's no time for that in Gemini Heroes Reborn. This is a video game, after all. She quickly goes from jumping through time to using her telekinetic powers to stop bullets and throw objects. And did I mention that she's able to slow down time and run real fast? Sometimes it feels like there's nothing she can't do. As you'd imagine, it's a lot of fun to play with Cassandra's various powers. Even without firing guns, there's an inherent joy to stopping a missile inches from your face and hurling it back at the enemy with your force powers. This is all a blast for the first half hour, but quickly turns repetitive when you realize there's not much more to the combat. Cassandra's powers would have been better suited in a more interesting game, something that wasn't pigeonholed into the hero's universe. A big part of the problem is that the facility isn't visually interesting. You'll see a lot of the same rooms and areas across the three-hour adventure, only sometimes with different colors and details. In the future, the building is completely crumbling, overrun with vegetation. The two time periods do an excellent job of standing out, but fail to make the dull locations more interesting. It doesn't help that Gemini Heroes Reborn has one of the most predictable plot twists I've ever seen. You don't need to be a fan of the TV show to know where this is going within the first few minutes. And like so many stories employing excessive amounts of time travel, I'm not sure this story makes a lot of sense when everything is said and done. Perhaps the most surprising aspect of Gemini Heroes Reborn is that it only uses one of the characters from the show. Forget about teaming up with Hero, Noah Bennett, and the Haitian, because this game is filled with brand new faces. While I'm sure some will get a kick out of using Cassandra's special abilities, I have a hunch longtime Heroes fans will be disappointed by the complete lack of fan service. Most mentions of the source material are brief and often inconsequential. I applaud the developers for turning what could have been a mindless beat-em-up into a fast-paced puzzle platformer. At its best, the game attempts to mimic the 3D challenges found in Mirror's Edge and Portal, only without the expert precision we saw in those releases. I enjoyed playing around with the superpowers and confusing the faceless guards, but even at a brief three hours, Gemini Heroes Reborn runs out of steam quickly. Hey, thanks for watching our review. 
This is just the first of two reviews going live today, so make sure and check out my take on the deadly Tower of Monsters in a few hours. We also have reviews going up of Dino Egg's Rebirth, Between Me and the Night and AIPD, Artificial Intelligence Police Department. I'm also plotting the return of Nintendo Power's Best and Worst of 1993, so be on the lookout for that. We have a lot of huge stuff lined up, so make sure and click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 